just finishing off a hot hot spot pizza. That was just a, that was a an advertising plug. Hotspot Pizza, Andros, very nice cookie. <laughs> That'd be funny if we were talking to like 200,000 people and we're both plugging like our corner <laughs> store, you know. <laughs> Come to Andros, get some lighters. <laughs> Let me just get my cigarettes here. Hang on, where are they? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, feels like uh, lots happened since we last chatted. Yeah, I guess. Your beard's um, getting longer. It's quite, I'm quite enjoying it. Getting a bit uh, sort of salty. The hair is getting all very, all very. I'm, I'm so envious. Salty. Yeah, I know. I'll send you some in the post. <laughs> I could sell my hair. I could sell my hair. Well, maybe that'll get you your laptop. Someone once had the idea that uh, a certain group of people should just create a sperm bank and uh, make a, an enormous amount of money. <laughs> well, one dollar for every sperm, you'd have millions. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it, Q, ladies. <laughs> Being involved in the process is extra. Yeah. Anyway. So it was your birthday yesterday? It was, yeah, 47. That's Prime it. number. Um, started off with a Don kayak, which is very nice. Uh, which it didn't trump me delivering a friend of mine's presents by kayak. That was good. I delivered present. <laughs> I said, "Be the beach at two, and I'll come in from the sea on my kayak." So I did it, <clears throat> but I managed to capsize on the way. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been in a yacht in a, in a canoe. <clears throat> out at sea and you capsize it's quite a scary thing the sort of it activates all this as memory particularly what's under there and uh but my my first my first priority was her was his presence so i was trying to save his presence from coming out <laughs> but i wrapped him in a bag and i tied it all up so it was fine but my phone was in there my both phones were in there and then my, so i managed to save everything apart from one sock so there's one of my socks at the <laughs> bottom, bottom of the ocean. And uh, my friend said, well, that, that, that's probably a good thing. That's a good story. You can go and find the socks. So I managed to get there on time, delivered this. They're soaking wet. <laughs> so I just lay in the sun and dried a bit. While we, he said, I'll see you in 10 minutes at the bar. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's the guy that took the photos, the black and white one. He's an amazing guy. He's in his late, uh, early 60s. And he bought me presents that were just perfect. So he bought me this stand for my phone, which is just so simple, yet works perfectly. And he bought me a, an extension charger, one of these one of these red things. Oh, wow. So a longer lead, fast charger extension. Very useful. He bought me, bought me peanuts, and he bought me hot chili sauce and some figs. But he said the most important thing is the cardboard box. This is one of my favorite cardboard boxes that I'm given, so stuff like that. So he's the guy that's got the first manuscript. Uh, so he's, he's got it. And uh, yeah, and then, and then we printed the manuscript off. Then we had a, a Waters Pistol Jewel. <laughs> uh, and I, I created a, a holster for it and the water gun fits in nicely. I went to the hardware store. So he's got one of these S, S things. Have you got a, and he said, eh? I said, I just tried <laughs> like this. They go, oh, aye. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. So he gave me it, and I said, How much? He said, Ah, oh, it's a present. So I, it fits perfectly into my belt, and I've got a bit of string that hangs onto the water pistol, which is actually a, a spray gun for, for plants. So it doubles as a plant spray. And basically, his, my friend's main thing is that the Greeks are completely unconscious about COVID. I mean, about what? Not, not COVID, about the, about the virus. I mean, they're not, they're not, not all of them. But the majority of them are just back to normal. They're hugging each other, meeting each other, having a laugh, coughing on each other. N nothing. And then they're opening their doors wide on June the 15th to the entire world. So the entire world's going to come to this island. Well, not obviously, but it's been very, very busy. And if one or two people catch it and die, it's lockdown again. 
you know, the whole thing will just shut down again. <laughs> and uh, that's it. And then I'll just be back again to, all right, here we are again. <laughs> <clears throat> and no one will be able to leave the island. I'll be back to home delivery pizza. And uh, everybody will be like, fucking, fuck this. As, I mean, and then and, uh, my friend is, he says, I guarantee you it's going to happen because he's, they're not paying attention. So what he's doing, because he's 61, and he had ME when he was younger. So he's like trying to say, that, listen, you know, for me, it's dangerous. If I get something, then I, I could die. So he won't, Vas is creating a T-shirt for him, which is basically stay back or there'll be consequences. And he's got his dog trained to bark at <laughs> anyone who comes near him. I gave him, I gave him some, uh, where is it? I gave him some of these. I gave him some of these to keep, to throw at people. Uh, just get away from me. And then, and then he's, got the water, he's got the water gun. So he can make it fun, just going, get up back, two meters, diometra, diometra. But the way, what's funny is the way he behaves is that people come up to him and he just walks away. And they go, what, what's wrong with you? He says, diometra. And they go, but it's just a joke. It's a, it's, it's a fake. For you, but not for me, you know, so whatever. It's very, very funny. So he's not going to go out for two months. He's going to stay at home all summer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's very funny. <laughs> today, so today, today we actually went for coffee, right, to, to, to have a chat. And you're not allowed to serve coffee unless it's in a paper cup. Uh, but the guy who's... The guy who runs the shop is too lazy to go and get paper cups, which is literally 50 meter walk. So he said, but I have my cups. They're okay. They're, they're clean. They're very clean. It's well, yeah, all right. But if you get caught, you know, you get fined. And you get, so he said, so we were head, hiding them under our jackets. And then we decided, because I hired a car today. So we basically, Nigel and, uh, had his car. I had my car. And we sat next to each other, talking on WhatsApp through the, through the windows, right? So we're talking like this, like just chatting like this. And then the police coast guard went by. We're looking at us. We're just like, hello. <laughs> like talking like spies like us. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shipment's coming in at four o'clock. <laughs> and uh, we just drank our coffee and, and chatted uh, in our cars. <laughs> it's also very, very windy today. So it's, it's not easy to do it. So. And I got my coat dry clean. So I got that back. And uh, Vasia found out that she's got all, you know, within one day, she's got a deal for her T-shirts, which is great, from our mineral museum uh, in, in Athens through her uncle. So that's going great. And then she bought me a, a rucksack for my birthday. So she knows me. She's bought me a rucksack. Nice one. So everything's just, yeah. Hickety-boo. Hickety-boo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of like like if you're I'm like there I I saw some someone told me about someone was in a Tim Horton parking lot and they were given a ticket for being in the parking lot alone by themselves yeah. because they somehow be some influence on teens or something and the cop gives them a ticket for having this this coffee in a parking lot all by himself and. You know, I, I guess that's the thing about humor is when things get so utterly ridiculous that they're that they're insane, and that the humor, like the only thing you can do is laugh. Like, I mean, there's yeah. <laughs> you give me a ticket for what? <laughs> I might influence teenagers. I I wish. Just get me some teenage. Let's get some teenagers. Let's have a chat. Yeah. But you know, I, I can see with your show that anyone who comes in contact with you, I would have the camera sort of like they've got a clothespin somewhere on them. It doesn't matter who. And so on the island, there's all these people and some policemen, they have like five or 10 on the back of their uniforms because everyone's yeah. coming up and putting the clothespins on them. <laughs> so, so, so what's that in your head? What? <laughs> this? Oh, it's a game. It's a game. Don't worry about it. You can't touch me. <clears throat> well, actually, the, uh, there's a, it's, this is a, not a nice story because one, there's a woman in Ireland. She's an uh, American, uh, very nice lady who's an academic. She came here just to, to paint, to do her academia and stuff. And some guy, some young kid, came out of behind a bush and flashed his penis at her, right? And so she went, 
Oh, right, there's a guy with a penis out. Right, okay, so, yep, hi, yep. And she's walked up the hill. He follows <laughs> her. She's like, get up, just fuck off, right? So he just stays back. She carries on. He then hides behind a, a tree, and he's not got his penis out now. He's just, like, hiding there. And she goes, right, that's enough. So she took a photo of him and uh, sent it to some of us as friends. And I said, there was the police, and they went to the police. And the police, would you believe, the report was... They eventually got the report after two weeks because of COVID. So she got the report, no mention of any penises or anything, just harassed, right? And she goes, but what, you haven't put anything about what actually happened. And she says, yeah, but you don't, you don't have his name. We can't do anything without his name. And she just said, so you're saying if I was raped or attacked or someone burgled my house because I didn't get his name, that you can't put in the report? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's a small island because everyone knows everybody else. So we, we should know who it is. Therefore, we can't report. <laughs> we can't just make up. It's like uh, some of the logic here does make no sense at all. So she's just said, I'm just taking them to trainers. And some of them better watch out because they'll, they'll, get, they'll get sacked for this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's Greece for you. No logic whatsoever. <laughs> 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 Uh, you know, there's a, some, I think it was some restaurant, like they put up these plexiglass things, right? That have, of course, the air underneath, the air over thing, but there's this big plexiglass and they're wearing a mask, <laughs> and then, but then they're passing you this thing that you're touching that everyone's touching. And, yeah. and <laughs> you know, again, the kind of logic of kind of like, well, if this was a virus and it's how small and what? What do you think that glass is going to do? <laughs> yeah, they do that. They go that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll push that. Like, there's a place here that said, ah, we are going to set up an outside coffee thing. So they set up the outside coffee thing, and then everyone just gathers around it. And he's like, it's like the whole point of having the thing that you can move is that you put the coffee there, and people are over there. And then, you know, and then they go up and then they're, they're up smoking at the booth, you know, just getting a coffee, smoking, <laughs> talking to the guy. How are you? It's no, no, it's a sign saying two meters, you know. But I've said, I've, I was going to deface one because it's got a man and it says two meters, you know, and I, and uh, MM, and I said, oh, it's Malacca, which is wanker in, uh, in Greek. And he goes, yeah, yeah, two Malaccas. Yeah, correct. You're very right. Yeah, very good. But they, uh, just not paying it. I mean, the, the gas pump, they're holding it, they're touching the gas pump there. Even the thing to squeeze your, you know, to put the, the stuff on your hands, everyone's touching it. You know? <laughs> so, know. like, so the, so my friend, he's like, deals with his elbow, but that goes like that, goes like that, goes like that. Just to show, look, are you watching? Yeah. <laughs> and people go, get back. <laughs> get your kung fu, tai chi gung, get away from me. Uh dear. Yeah. Very funny. What about you? What's new for you? Well, um I I've had I, I've been training these teams online and so it's the first time for me actually having a group of people lear learning what I've what I've come up with. And and the other day I had these uh I have these synergy card these conversation cards, right? So I've mm -hmm. identified types of conversations and one group of them are called synergy conversations. And there's like grieving, healing, clearing, appreciating, synchronizing, synergizing, conflict resolution. Anyway, looking at how you can specifically, you know, have conscious communications with people. And, and they're, they've been, you know, I think it's session number eight with them. And it's the first time introducing the conversation types. Before that, it's just maps and values and sort of creating this conceptual thing in their mind. And it's working. Like, you know, it's, it's the first time with a group of people who know nothing about my work that I've, I'm in a Zoom teaching four people, very small, and they have a, a reason to be together. I've got three teams right now. And I was teaching them these cards. And again, it was kind of like the first time, like in 25 years, to have a group of people actually paying attention long enough to understand what I'm doing. And, and they've never, you know, they haven't had nonviolent communication training. They haven't had any communication training in any way. And what age of teen? What's that? What ages of teens? The, they're about 
probably in their early 30s, maybe oh, right. one guy's early 20s. And they're, they're, they're very earth-centered. They want to create community. They love the garden. They love going in nature. And they're a, kind of like a little family unit. And like you could just see the light bulbs going off. It was just like they had never come across the idea that these conversations that are usually unconscious or just happen in whatever manner could be consciously created and that to clear the air with somebody like if, if you piss me off because you put your uh your clothespin on my on my glasses and i didn't see it and i went you know you fucker you know <laughs> you fucking pigger so i'm gonna clear like clear the air with you right and and so and I know for me, you know, for most of my life, I had no idea how to clear my irritation with people in a way that didn't use some, you know, methodology that ended the relationship, like some minor thing that I just wanted to bring up. And at some point, <clears throat> you know, I was working with a, an elder mentor and he was, he kept bringing up all the things I was doing to irritate him. <laughs> and so we were, you know, it was the first time anyone had sort of done so because most people just kind of would put up with my irritations and my unconsciousness and they wouldn't say anything you know they, they, i would just get or they away just with ignore them. you or walk away or ignore yeah like the but, they, but they would never tell me actually what i was doing to annoy them and so this was my first experience with sort of except and i was very sensitive and very you know sensitive to criticism and i didn't want to hear anything you know at, at that time and so here's this guy you know who like i've done with younger people with me where they're starting to irritate me and I just look buddy <laughs> now you crossed a line and now I'm not going to be so nice and now I'm going to tell you how you're fucking bugging me <laughs> and I call that a clearing conversation <laughs> but you may call yeah. it like me pounding you but until you get it I'm going to tell you and you know I, I've just seen of all the conversation types that's kind of like the hardest one yeah I think um you know, when I was working as a wind turbine company, we were attempting to do self-organizing complex, you know, it would just organize itself. And there were about 20 of us all over the world. So it was very difficult time zones, nationalities, skill sets, like engineers with, you know, different kinds of people. And we had these heuristics. Like number one was only do something you enjoy. So it got to the point where no one enjoyed reading uh, Mr. W's emails and uh, <laughs> we told him listen you know uh, and, it's, and, and then people are ignoring it and talking about it behind his back so I said listen Mr. W you know I don't read your emails because they're a long and annoying all right I just it drains me it's even I said oh here you go it's like a 10 page email you know with his perceptions of what's going on right this is what's happening well it's, it's from your perception yeah it's good to add that to the grist but do you know that most people aren't reading them? I don't care. I'm enjoying myself. Fine. Well, can you let them know that, because I was responsible for organizational stewardship along with this other lady. And he was the most confrontational person. I mean, really incredible. He loved it. And he was very good at it. You piss people off so much that he forced them. So he now is going to make a living out of conscious disruption. Saying, if you think that you, your business is fine, I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> And you're going to pay me for it. Because you think you've got to fight. I will fuck you. <laughs> Drive you insane. So you say, get this guy away from me. My job's done. <laughs> so uh, one, of that, one of those things in, in, in that was, was about we, we tried to agree, okay, if it's a confrontation, we just have to go right at it. And actually, that's where the gold is. That's where the real challenge was. Say, okay, so why is it that you're a team? It's my issue. You know, what you do, you know, if you're, if you're complete equilibrium, nothing bothers you, you know, if you like water, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then you and I now have got to the point where, I mean, it doesn't matter when it says to me anymore. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're probably right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 an asshole, come on. Yeah, I could, I've been training for years. So yeah, happy <laughs> to be an asshole. Happy to be an asshole for you. If it kind of wakes you up a bit, to that, you know, that behavior, you know, Whatever, whatever. It's very common. And I, I just think we're trained to give the right answers and not confront each other because it, it often ends up physical violence, especially mm -hmm. amongst guys. So 
and that's actually there's a guy in uh, in Amsterdam who does actually he's a martial art guy and he does a peace martial arts for men to deal with women because he said men can usually deal with a guy pissing them off you just have a fight or you just sort of shout at each other and get over with but if a woman's doing that you can't punch her you can't, even if you want to you can't hit her you you just end up going Bleh! and then they find a way to you know get you so he says you've got to the women are our strongest teachers to to be stay uh-huh okay yeah yeah fine no you're right and then ultimately as my, my friend says just say you're right just just say you're right and get it over with i mean it really is not worth the hassle with women to really have a go thanks ladies if you're watching this okay it's true for all of you all of you every fucking last one of you <laughs> don't say it's not i'm not like that i'm not like that <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. Yep, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's for tea? So that's the kind of uh, <laughs> confrontation. Yeah, to confront someone. Well, do you know? I was in the, I was in the thing with uh, Gino and Denise yesterday. Denise, um, there's a synergy mastermind that you connected me into. I think you did. Maybe Gino did. Maybe, maybe Gino did. I don't know who Denise is. Oh, I probably do, but <laughs> I thought you were a connector. Okay, so Gina brought me into the Synergy Mastermind that I've been going. It's the the only sort of group conversation I'm participating weekly in right now. That's not part of what I'm doing. When they're systems designers and everyone seems to be, you know, quite impressive in who they are. And every week somebody presents their work to the rest of the group. And, or two people and so I've been in it for a couple of weeks and I, I think I'm presenting next week and both times Gino has kind of given me a rub or kind of like <laughs> kind of like brought up <laughs> not that but not that one no he's not doing that but it's kind of like he's bringing up he's kind of give it like he's humans have if, if you poke them they want to poke you back right <laughs> and so I think when I did my little message to him and you that that was a big poke and, um, and that he's, and so in these meetings, he sort of gives me a little poke and I'm in my sort of, I think the first one I was in my captain sweep outfit. And I think this one, I was just looking normal. I'm beginning to, I want to give the impression that I can be normal. And so I'm dressing nice and appearing yeah. be coherent just to kind of let people know that no, most of the time it's my sense of humor that's going on here and uh i'm in character <laughs> you know if you, yeah. the, the funny thing is 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 when people sort of you know it's like money python right if you're straight faced and you never mention anything about the arrow in your head or something people don't know how to take you like they're used to it in movies but they're not used to it in real life exactly so yeah. for me and my outfit I, I i fundamentally just love it because i you know i just love that yeah, I just love fucking with people in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that when so you... So what, 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 did, what did Gino do? Well, it was more kind of... He's talking and then he's coming up with an example of kind of like whether failure or me. And he says, like Elijah kind of thing. <laughs> and it's, it's just because I don't know him that well. I don't know these people that well. And, and just the way he's done it both times, I know that it's kind of like a... A bit of an underhanded jab, but he's, he, it's, it's, it, of course, it's not appearing that way. But yesterday he did it, and I just, I started laughing because, you know, this, this, <laughs> this, you know, it's like friends, you know, who kind of like are, are ribbing each other in a situation where they know the other person either can't respond or do anything about it, but they kind of, you know, when you're in high school, you, you rib each other and you, you're always kind of playing with each other. And, and I think that as you become adults, you're supposed to not to kind of thing. Yeah, it's a bit like you could get back saying, listen, you know, I have to tell them, listen, Gino has a very small penis. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very well known amongst the group, right? It's been spread around and he has to compensate with that. These little pokes, these little jibes right so he believe doesn't really that. he doesn't have any it's, it's recorded hi Gino you're so such a dog <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you getting back at him <laughs> he's funny because he's like uh, yeah he, he's 
there's a guy who who I know who, who knows him reasonably well. Who's, who it was funny because and, and Gina would be happy with saying this because I don't think Gina cares. He really, doesn't care. And uh, Gina did this thing to this guy, right? Hey, we got this thing, and Alex said, "Stop right now! If you do that again, I will knock you down where you stand." Uh, do you understand? And she went, "Hey, I like you." So that's is this face to face Gina. or in Zoom? Yeah, face to face. So Alex basically said to me that you know, Gina knows a guy. You hit him, and you just do that. You do, you just, you just, you just avoid everything. You ignore anything you say. He just does what he wants. Yeah. And he's got his own agenda. He's got absolutely. This is what he's doing. And so he keeps me out of most groups that he's in because he wants to keep me over there where he knows he can try and thinks he can control me. Right? Right. Whereas I've just come in round the side and, you know, so I turned up in the call that I set up yesterday and I just left after five minutes. So I, see, I just thought, I thought you'd get no to Gino. It's over to you. Bye. Thanks. My birthday. See you later. Bye. And Gino actually sang happy birthday. Wait, you set up a birthday call and left after five with the people? No, what happened, no, what, no, what happened was uh, what Gina was doing with this Antaraba project, which is the safe places around the world, which is very important. Um, he put me in touch with uh, Nicole Gruel, who's in Sydney. I contacted her. I did the work. I, he kept just throwing people. I did all the connections. I set calls up. I did the introductions. I organized. I did all the the hosting, the welcoming, understanding, sharing back to Gino. And then I said, well, I think you better meet Gino. So you turned up yesterday. Hi, Katie. Hi, hi. This is Gino. It's my birthday. I'm here. I'm just wanted to be here to honor that. And this is Gino. So I'm now going now. <laughs> and that was it. So I, I left. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, he, that project will work. It's, it's going well. <laughs> and, uh, but but for, for him, for him in his head, I'm the guy in Andros, and he won't talk to me about if it's about anything. He won't talk about anything else apart from you, the guy in Andros. And I might not be in Andros all summer, and you know, until October. So, you know, <laughs> so you're I'm out. not the guy in Andros. I'm not the guy in Andros. I'm, you're the guy I'm, who I'm, used to I, be I, in I've Andros. Andros. <laughs> I'm in Andros. I've been in Andros in October, but as of now, I'm somewhere else. I'm doing my own thing. But you're supposed to be doing well. Are you in a way out? Well, you know, I've given you like three project proposals with Excel spreadsheets. It's taken me three hours to prepare. You didn't even say thank you. You didn't even acknowledge that you received me. And there's no money. I'm not going to do any more work until you pay me. So, see you later. She knows that now. Uh, that's fine. Can I tell you uh, another kind of funny story with someone you've introduced me to? I, uh, I recently defriended Attila. And um, we, we went on a journey together and mm -hmm. I, was in the, I was in the middle of meditating and he came up in the middle, like he was kind of like, he comes up in the middle of it, like I'm deep meditation, left my body, doing <laughs> some, some major things. And he comes up and he wakes, he sort of like shakes me and goes, did you know your charger is still on in the van? And... And I'm, I, I, it took me a while to sort of come back in and register that he's doing this. And it's the first time he's sort of crossed the line into the irritation zone and not just the little irritation zone, probably my worst pet peeve. If I'm in the middle of a ceremony or ritual and someone is talking near me is bad, if someone is actually trying to get my attention, I essentially want to throw them off a cliff that's nearby. Did you make him aware of that? Though? Did he know that? Well, that's my... <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's why I attempted to, to handle it with some grace, but I, I, I didn't, I, I lost my temper and basically, um, stated my preference for him mm -hmm. to leave and to leave me alone and don't bring little things like that into situations where I'm obviously meditating and not wanting to be disturbed and of course like i need a big sign and i need to tell everyone look i'm over there and if i'm meditating leave me the fuck alone until i'm out that's it you know i, I i've had enough times that, of course it's my mistake i should have warned him but we were going through again this journey and so okay and i i sort of left him 
you know, and what I do with these young guys is I give them a test, of course. I'm always, I always want everyone to, to work, start working immediately for free on Plantary Guardians. And if you're not willing to do that, I, I, I'm basically not that interested in you. And of course, that really works well, right? I, <laughs> that's why I'm alone. <laughs> and so I gave him a task. I said, okay, just at the end, because I knew I, I there was other things I sort of had to do, but I, he was waiting for me. I knew I had to drive him home and just end our particular part in this. And so I, I drove him home and then came back to where I was. But I left him and I said, you know, I'd like you to start working on the uh, Planter Guardians website. And I'll give you a week. Just want to see what you can do on your own. That's, that's my big task. Yeah. A week comes by, nothing's happened. He's working on his own stuff. And I think I've shared enough of whatever I'm doing, thinking, you know, just, just kind of like you with, the, with your game going, you know, just, just kind of go along. At some point, you will be very well rewarded. You will be freaking super pleased that you just helped at a time when I needed it, when I didn't have the fucking hundred million in my pocket, like I'm going to. But most people, they just... Well, maybe, I mean, maybe the... Are you assuming that people can see the value of, of it and, yeah. and just say, rather than, you know. No, I'm assuming that. that, the, that after, the, after, after, I mean, after two years of doing the game of now in 2006, 2008, I realized that, you know, a, a good friend of mine then, and I fell out with him as well. A wonder, wonderful blow up. It's beautiful. Um, I triggered his father issue somehow. But, uh, he said, "Listen, you know, you're it. You, you can't explain this. You can't. You just do it, and then people just get confused and don't know what to do. So you have to keep telling people, right? Listen, you know, you're free to do what you want. So can I go? Yes, you can if you want. And then the guy said, "Can I go and shit in the corner? Of course you can go and shit in the corner, but you're not going to do it because you just don't do that, do you? Well, I might. Well, go on then. Put your charges down. Go and shit in the corner. No. So it's what you really want." So I, so he thought about it, and then he said, I want everyone to sit on the floor and look at me. <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they did. Everyone got on the floor. That was quite easy to do. And looked at me like, oh, this is wonderful. Things like that. <laughs> very camp guy, very funny. I said, that was one of the nicest experiences of my life. I said, well, how much, what, how, how much is that for? You know? So it's that, it's that, kind, of, it's that kind of thing. So people don't, don't realize or don't understand, then fine. Eventually, but then in the way that maybe you're not, if you're not asking the right question to the universe, or in a way that is true, then the response isn't coming back. So you're getting, you know, I've introduced a few people to others and connected them. And one of the key things now is that there are many strong ones, you know, like you and I are strong. Uh, we intimidate a lot of people. A lot of people are very scared of me. And don't say anything because they know that I'll just come back to that and they'll go, oh shit, I'll just, wait. I'll leave him, I'll just watch it, I'll just stalk him and don't, I won't talk anything. <clears throat> and, um, but uh, what was I was going to say, there's a, so these strong ones who've got a lot of knowledge, but they don't have the collaboration skill. They, they're just either from an older generation who just don't know how to work with other people and yeah. then they end up, or, or they just want to be told what to do all the time. So, well, it's all there, just, do something and impress me or just say, oh, here, look, I've come back with these beautiful cards for you, you know, Elijah. I found someone who's a friend and printed it out. We've done this and I've got a guy who's got a web page and he can do that for you. <clears throat> Initiative, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that's that's what we need now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know what I have found, I guess, over the years is... You know, in terms of let's say teaching, and if you're if you're going to share something, if you're going to teach somebody, like they're either going to pay you, or they're just going to hang around you, right? And if they hang around you, and they can't pay you for your time, you want something back, right? They're going to help you with some work, mm. or something, right? And I think over the ages, when people don't have the ability to pay someone, but they have the knowledge, that there's a good exchange, right? The person gives their time, they give their attention. And they get the teaching. It's kind of like an apprenticeship program, right? In the guilds, right? They were both yep. getting something. And the thing the young person would get is eventually they would be the master, whatever, 
but they had to put up with the, with the teacher. And the teacher would either, you know, work their ass off and <clears throat> treat them like a slave, or they would be kind to them, whatever it was. But that relationship, which is very different from like a school relationship, used to be the way humans interacted, I think. And so that's changed. And so now we have this free school system, people go to school, the teacher gets paid, but it's a very different relationship because you, there isn't that strong bond with the teacher. And so now what I've seen is like, I have a body of knowledge. I know I have something very valuable that can change your life, that can create a lifestyle, whatever it is. And over the years, you know, I've noticed that you know, until you have the reputation or until you have other people saying that you're the person with whatever that knowledge is, you can be very alone with your, your knowledge. And, and again, again, depending on how good you are with people, depending how good you are, let's say, as an entrepreneur. Uh, and so in my own world, I just got more and more, I guess, in, in a sense, a combination of irritation and frustration with everybody, thinking that I have found some gold and you people are too stupid to get it. And because of that attitude, of course, I would just push most people away. And any situation I was in, whether like in activism and looking at old groups and organizations, I would just see how unorganized they were, how, you know, they just weren't that good at designing, organizing, planning, anything. And I was working, let's say, at a corporate level of being able to do this, but working with people who had no desire to be facilitated, no desire to be led, no desire for anything other than that they want to you know, defend the planet and stop this from occurring. And they would always get slaughtered. You know, everything I've ever participated in, I've just watched us get slaughtered over and over again. And then I would use the experience to design the next map or figure out like I, every time I failed, I would always go, well, fuck, what the fuck happened? Map it out, figure it out, and then have another piece and then have another piece. And my pattern was in a coffee shop. I would show someone, someone I didn't know, someone who wasn't qualified who just woke up seven in the morning and show them this map that I just you know spent two days on that had you know five conceptual models all linked together and go hey what do you think of this <laughs> and they would go hey. <laughs> and, that, and that was my only instance of showing anyone and then of course I'd get kind of irritated go, oh fuck that it's, it's not good enough or I'm not good enough for this and then I just go back to my work and start on another map and you know over years just do this over and over and over again and this sort of insane pattern of seeking validation and knowing I was doing it like the entire time that I've been going through what I've gone through. I know that I was not doing what was necessary to bring my work into the world, but I knew that in like deep down, I knew I'm not ready. The world's not ready. The work's not ready. I'm only going to really come into the world with my work when I'm ready. The work's ready and the world's ready, which to me is kind of now. But along the way, I think people are longing for it now, and they, they lost the spinning around. And because people are so programmed with money, so they only value things if they pay for it, and then they don't know if someone offers them something. This is well, there's different agreements here. I'm offering a range of agreements, a range of ways of, of getting involved with this, like whether it's connections or setting up, like, because everybody knows everybody else. Well, you can bring ten people to this, and they pay 50, 50 bucks, and you get you get. 5% or 10% of all that. But people aren't used to doing that or thinking like that. I mean, I remember even a guy used to be my mentor, a guy called Roger Thomas, who was a, he called himself a parenthetic thinker. A what? what was that? A parenthetic thinker. So what does that mean, Roger? So I'm very mathematical. I'm able to hear something, put it in brackets, put it over there, that, and then say, how do all these add up to produce something? What is, what are you solving here? Where's the problem? He's very, very good at it. And uh, um, he was saying that he would go to CEOs and say, well, I can do many things for you. Um, but the agreement is that, you know, I will only work with you if you pay me what you pay yourself. That's a fair trade. Otherwise, you'll treat me as an employee. I'm not. And they'd say, yes or no. If they said no, it's fine. See, nice to meet you. See you later. And eventually, the reward got around and people would hire them and say, well, you just pay me the same as you and that's a good agreement. You know, one hour of your time, one hour of my time, exchange, done. And you can deal with that. When it was, we'll do it for a cut, a percentage of it. They don't know how to do it. Even barter or even donations. We say, oh, give me some advice. I don't know how to even think about how to value something. 
So it's that not knowing how, how valuable something is, uh, which is why I stopped doing money for the game of now, because, you know, people's lives changed again and again. I see people's lives, you know, were going to kill themselves and they played and they opened them up and they had all sorts of awakenings. And I said, well, you know, how much is that worth? Well, it's changed my life. All right, how much is, can you buy me a car then? No. So it's, but now we're coming to that time, I think, where people will value this and, and they'll go, wow, this is, and it was so, as you say, it's so much money. And then it's going to right, okay. And then set up a center here, do that. People come, they make the effort, and you can sit back and just, oh, you do that. I'm, I'm, off, I'm off for a walk. <laughs> um, yeah, and just that's, that's what I'm doing now, is more helping other people do things and connecting them. I enjoy the creativity of the Confident English thing I'm going to set up because that's great fun, what I'm doing. That's my next thing that I'll just set up for, for some passive income. Whilst all this other stuff is organized, and then eventually I know someone's going to go, You're it, I'm going to give you that. How much do you want? Ah, don't just, just give me 100 grand to start to set something up. But once things get going, I'll just basically phone you saying, You this. I'll say, Yep, yeah, get it. What do you want? What laptop? You want five? I just need one. I think five. Give me one thing. Right. And yeah. help. Yep, done. And that's it. Just pick up the phone. And there's the people who realize and recognize now that that's what's needed in the world. Yeah. So I'm very, very clear that's going to happen. Well, th th there was a time when I, I was in a friend's living room and I had this card set of uh, knowledge pattern recognition cards, about mm -hmm. three, three cards all about knowledge pattern recognition. And there's another uh, group of models called Profit Zones, mm -hmm. a book of Profit Zones, all the different ways you can make profit in a business. So knowledge mm -hmm. pattern recognition, Profit Zones. And then I think I just took some of the cards from the... Uh, from the, the other decks that I'd created. And I started just flipping cards randomly in patterns to design businesses. And within like 20 minutes, I, I had, you know, 10 businesses that you could just look and go, fuck, that's a business, that's a business, that's a business, that's a business, that's a business. And, the, and there was this complete overwhelm of creative. I mean, this has happened to me most of the time where I'm just, I'm overwhelmed by the creative potential. I'm overwhelmed by the methodology that's coming through me. But if I showed the same thing to other people, they couldn't see it. No. They, they, couldn't, they, they, they couldn't see it they at all. Have, yeah, it's like they're running Windows XP and you're running Windows 10. So they, <laughs> they, they can't uh, process it. It, well, it. it sounds like English. Yeah. It sounds something, but I've got no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And so like, I, you know, pretty much 25 years now, like at least five to 10 hours a day, sitting down designing with abstract models. So, you know, whatever that, it's like being a weightlifter, right? At some point you, you develop the muscle so strong, but you, you, when you're talking to someone who doesn't think in abstract patterns, they have no idea. Yeah, or, or symbolically, because symbolism was the language of the ancients and they knew how to read things see and observe. And I had this conversation with this guy I'm talking about, and he's, uh, because <laughs> there's a guy in Germany, he's a trickster, nice guy. And he wears shiny silver suits, which makes me laugh. <laughs> and uh, and um, I said, hi. I said, no, I said, hello, hello, hello. And his response after a day was a question mark. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, you know, where I'm from, it's customary that if someone says hello to you, you, you say hello back. It's quite, it's quite normal. And he said, I apologize. I'm in a ninth dimensional reality right now and uh, coming down to 3D to understand these protocols. <laughs> and I went, okay, yeah, you know, you had, just, you had some coffee today? Question mark. I said, well, you know, normally when you ask questions to somebody in three dimensions, there's usually people respond with yes or no, or no, I had tea, right? <laughs> oh, thank you for this. This is very helpful. <laughs> so I, 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 I then spoke to my friend about this and uh, he's a Chinese medicine expert, acupuncturist, the whole works, esoteric understanding as well. And he says that um, it's called floating Shen. A floating Shen is when your spirit is out of the body and basically all sorts of stuff gets in. 
and up to three, so up to three at once can be functioning through you. And it's very common people who take a lot of drugs or who are out of the, you know, or drink way more, too much coffee or who work too hard or whatever. They're, they're not in the body. And so now with the consciousness of what's happening, people just have got no idea where they are. <laughs> like, woo, he's talking about stuff. So he's, and I said, what do you think of this nine dimension stuff? He said, well, you know, forget the number, but, you know, if you're very calm and relaxed, you just still, then you can see things that other people can't. You, you can, you notice things. And if you're just very relaxed and your body's fine, you, you notice stuff that people just don't see, including entities or a sense of something's not right here where they can look in his eyes and something's not, it's not here. Um, and that's very easy for him. He does this a lot. He's just doing this. He doesn't do the genome on your face. He's just like, eh. and he'll, he'll just, he'll just, you know, oh, that, it's a nice chair, isn't it? I like it. Well, it's well made, isn't it? And if they're not responding and they're starting to still go into the world, he's like, I'll see you later. Yeah. Um, he's a master at it. And because, uh, like, I've learned, for example, the Greeks do not talk to a Greek unless they've had their coffee. There's just absolutely no point. Until they've had their coffee, then they sort of slightly wake up and then you can ask them a question. Ask them before they go, eh? <laughs> right, forget it. Forget it. I didn't, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked into the I walked to the supermarket last night with my kilt on, and uh, I don't think there's anyone else apart from Greece where they just didn't give a fuck. They just, no one looked at me. Well, they saw it and went, "Oh, okay," and just carried on, which is great. So they just don't care. Yeah. About others, they're just focused on themselves and what they're doing, which is why they're not conscious of space. And the same with the Spanish; they're very similar. Uh, just not aware of their physical space and environment, which is why they drive like idiots and you've got to be careful. So you'd be driving up and someone's parked and then you say, he's going to pull it just before me. And they do. <laughs> he's looking, sees you <laughs> and then still pulls out. <laughs> it, it's as if they want to, why does he do that? He says, don't get upset. It's just the way we are. You do, but that's just stupid. You know, or you phone somebody four times, you leave a message saying, just call me, well, we can arrange a time to meet. Let's do that, and then nothing. Then you see them go, hey, how are you? I've called you four times, and you said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> ah, okay. It's, it's a training. It's a training. The, I, it's, the Greeks are a training. Yeah, so. Well, like, anyway, I think it's all, just, just to go to, I mean, I've got a call in uh, 10 minutes, but the other, I think it's the great, the Gregory thing. I don't know if you were involved in that, but thanks for the Greg. Gregory just appeared yesterday, two days ago. Talk, talking to me as everything was normal. Uh, uh, so yeah, if we can chat tomorrow or Saturday, that'd be interesting. Do you know where he's at in himself, or what is, is he still? No, because I I haven't been connecting with him like you, but I did all of a sudden just kind of uh, been commenting a little. So like, I mean, it's, it's so rare. Like I don't know if you noticed, but like. <laughs> You know, I've, I've gone down to a hundred people and these are hundred people that I really know and still almost no one is commenting, sharing, liking anything. It's just this empty expanse and I'm just pounding this shit out. Right. So I'm, I'm again, my what huge, was it, what was it? Gino said, you wrote all this thing about the Lord of the Rings. And then Gino said, I hope you find who is it? The Balrog. The Balrog. Right. Well, that shows he's paying attention. I mean, he read it. I mean, well, he he wa he watches and he listens, and then you know, he's he's always watching and observing. Yeah, and then and I think sure, what, like, what I'm on his radar now because I poked him. <laughs> yeah, he, he he likes that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Small yeah. penis. That's that's the key. Um, so <laughs> I think that was that. Speaking of which, the the you know, I've used a pendulum to when I said yeah, it's between my legs. So Gregory liked that one. So and, and then we got into that conversation, oh. and then and then uh, and then I think I think I quite like the Lost and Found as a theme. Yeah, no, but I did. Like, you know, I, I did. I, I I Facebook communicated with him in video form just for just a quick because he had to go, and within that I talked about you and did the the uh, mediating so to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, nice. And he's about to receive Justin. He doesn't know this yet, but Justin uh, Taylor will arrive in Nantucket 
and Justin is an extraordinary young man. Uh -huh. And he's uh, from Colorado. He's a startup shaman. Very gifted young man. So he, uh, I met him in Davos, where he kind of held the energy of the whole space, which was not easy. Um, and he's one of Gino's superstars. Oh. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, I truly. The, the best things in life to me is again the people who make me laugh and the, the the irony or the ridiculousness of whatever situations I get in. Like I've been in just some of the most funniest situations that I can imagine, and sort of like the <laughs> what you're talking about with Gino and being being in the kitchen with him and being you know thinking you know when you put two people together that you know at some point are gonna you know they're just so different, right? It's like the odd couple and, and they're going to at some point love each other, but in the beginning they're going to hate each other or at least they're, you know, they're going to have some major conflict. And I think deep down now, because for so long, I've just, I know you got to go, but I've disassociated. I observe, I don't participate. I've just been waiting, right? Waiting for fucking ever. And now it's kind of like, I feel like the gloves are off. I get to be me or I get to play. I get, you know, I, the chips off the shoulder and I don't feel like whatever is that, you know, my, one of my biggest wounds is kind of gone. And so I'm kind of left with this, okay, man, I, I get to kind of do whatever I want here. Like I'm like, I, I feel good about what I'm doing. I'm teaching people. It's working. I've, I've proven the concept because for the longest time, it's kind of like until you have that money coming in, no one believes you. And like you, I've done so much work for free and I've been attempting to live, you know, kind of like within God's, you know, you know, just surrender yeah, on, to on God's payroll and yes. see what happens and, and had this incredible experiences. But it's always, as you know, just on the edge, you know, it's always on the edge. And now it's kind of like there's a stability where now I've got enough momentum and confidence that it doesn't matter. Throw me anywhere with nothing. I'm fine. I mean, I'm yeah. I, everything. Yeah, did, did, did so, I mean, it's like uh, the, 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 the thing is that you, so you end up chasing each other on the kitchen table a lot. <laughs> and you, you manage to crack him a few times with a broom. And then, you know, where's, where's the, all these, you know, and then you go outside because at the end of the book, right. Uh, at the end of the book, uh, in, in portal number seven, there's a pool competition, right? And it's because <laughs> the guy here, this guy here, Aguirre, is just like a lord. He's an amazing guy. I call him uh, Lord Black, Lord uh, Lord Black Ball. And uh, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> so he and I play against Vasi and Arachnita, who's who's one of the silly characters, who's this spider lady, and she wins. And because she's obsessed with Mosca Grandi, the lead singer of the of the band. Uh, somebody makes a, a statue or a trophy made out of potato, potato likeness of Mosca Grande. So she's so in love with it, she takes it off. And in the, in the garden, there's a time traveling compost toilet. So she gets, she, 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 gets in the, she, gets, she gets in the compost toilet and travels around the galaxy, showing everyone her trophy, saying that, thinking that I'll get back in, I'll get back in time, I'll work it out, I'll get back in time for the party. And the, the important training sessions of the next day, and she kind of miscalculates. So basically, you, 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 you know, and uh, and ten plus one go into the garden, and then you go and say, I, "I'll just, I'll just wait for here. I'll just sit here because I'm the most patient of all of you." And then you sort of, you, you sort of <laughs> hit him with the broom again or something. And he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. You sit there." So he just sits there and he's like, <sighs> waiting on Arachnita to come back from wherever she's gone. Uh, yeah, very, very good, good, good fun. And, uh, <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is. Is, is it's like when you know whoever thinks they're the spiritual master, whoever thinks they've got it together. There's always something or someone that is going to get their goat, and that's the next thing, right? And it's just that moment of 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 knowing it or seeing it or being the person who's pressing that button. <laughs> But well, I it's exactly like Deadpool. Deadpool just could do that to every single other, because then because you can't die. So basically, he's like, yeah, yeah, hey, metal man, hey, and then, oh, fuck, what do you do that for? 
<laughs> keeps putting him. <laughs> Spider Man does as well, just yap, 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 never stops talking. And, uh, you know, I'm Batman. Is that right? Oh, very nice. Yeah, very good. You know, it's, <laughs> they're all just taking the piss out of each other, you know. Or Thor getting drunk and he's like, come on, we've got to go, we need you. And I said, I'm not going, I'm staying. And then the little rat raccoon thing says, we've got beer in the ship. Oh, yeah, what kind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm there so it's they're all just mates but they all sort of rival and wind each other up which is important so they can basically take on anything and when they know they have to get serious they get serious and when they want to wrestle they'll wrestle to strengthen themselves I think that's a that's a good thing that's where we're heading towards because Gino sees himself as the professor of the X-Men that's his does he? he perceives that's what he's doing yet yeah. well yeah. Well, there's another. At least, there's, there's at least now. twenty. There's at least yeah. There's at least twenty professors out there. <laughs> oh, we'll have to have a competition. You know, you have to play charades or something like that. Sounds like. <laughs> puck, puck you. Sounds like puck you. Sounds like puck you. Puck you. Puck you. <laughs> oh fuck you! Yeah, that's it. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. All done. <laughs> well, I can't wait to give my presentation and see what he says because I I saw his presentation. Yeah, and um, I'm sort of going, okay, well, that fits to that, that, and here, and then I'm going, well, I'm going to show you a little bit more. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> Have you seen? I don't know if I posted it, but I uh, there's a very nice uh, web mail I get every every week, and it's about uh, the Trojan Condom Company. I've come out with a cookbook called Get It Up or something. I forget it. But the, uh, the <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's very, very funny. And that's why I like because it's the humor is going to win all the time, you know, and it's like uh, something that's something to do with nuggets, fire nuggets, something like that is to do with, you know, pump, pump her nickel. That's it. Pump. Oh. Her. <laughs> that's one of the recipes. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's just it's brilliant you know and that's what I like is they're coming it's, it's selling like selling wonderfully well I think that's great but hey, yeah I better go you gotta go yeah. can I just one thing before before you go yeah um I recently did a video that was like the first time of me trying to explain one of my maps but explaining it kind of like with swearing and and funny faces and just me kind of beginning to go off. I can go off, right? And mm. and I've never really delved into it. Like I'm realizing there's a lot of things I just really haven't delved into because I'm always trying to freaking come up with this other shit. So anyway, I want to send it to you. And it's, it's a bit long. It might be even 20 minutes. But it just, mm. I, I, want, I want your feedback just in terms of, is it, is it as funny as I think? Or is it just going to come across as I'm crazy? But it's... Okay. I, I I would love to get you. I imagine it's a bit of both. Yeah, but please the, watch it and and okay. know that in the background, I'm, I'm, I I I want to get to the kids or I want to get I want to. This isn't for the scholars, right? This is for the no. people who are like different. So here we have these guys. Which, then we have fuckwits. Then we have complete fuckwits, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Then we have people who don't even know that are fuckwit. Now, they're the most dangerous. They're the really dangerous ones because they usually have PhDs and have professorships, a bit like our friend. So they're complete fuckwits who don't know they're a fuckwit and they're the most dangerous ones. So stay away from them. When, you, when you've got that, say, I'll see you in the canteen. Yeah, I like the macaroni. It's, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I better go. All right. Love Cheers, you, man. brother. See you. Bye-bye. Okay, see you.